made it for Spanish video, and then we couldn't sell it to Spanish video because we didn't have a soap star in it. We had someone that we were going to cast, but she fell out the last second. So we went, they were going to pay us, I think, about $17,000, which was still some, but we thought we would make more. The idea was, um, I heard this advice that if you wanted to make a film, or I mean, if you wanted to write a script, we would say, write three scripts and throw them away. Because the fourth one would be the good one, the first three is just practice and they'll be garbage. And I thought, how can anybody get up every morning knowing they're writing something they're going to just throw away? That's just never, it's never going to happen. So what if you wrote those three scripts, but also shot them yourself, so that you would not just learn writing, but you would learn lighting and camera and editing, and learn more about the whole process, and throw those away somewhere, but maybe somewhere where you could sell it. So that's why I made the movie so cheap. But what surprised me when I look at it is like, oh my god, we, we shot one take of everything in that movie. Because the only thing that cost money was the film. So I, the idea was, let me go down with Carlos, shoot the movie, I'll go back in the edit room, I'll look, the stuff that didn't come out, we'll go back and we'll just reshoot those takes. He never went back. You know, he ended up working with the things that was there. But the thing was, if we shot more than one take, it would double our budget, because most of the budget was filmed. That's why the movie was so inexpensive. And I never thought anyone would see it. And I know people were going to see it. I, I would have probably borrowed more money. I would have gotten a crew. I would have thought, oh, now i got to make a real production out of it. But it taught me such a valuable lesson that um, when Columbia Pictures saw the movie as just a demo of my work, they said, what movie do you want to make next? And I said, well, I don't really have any movies. Y'all found this movie so quick. Why don't we just remake El Mariachi like that? So they said, okay, we'll remake it with Antonio Banderas. We'll call it Desperado. But let's, let's screen Mariachi to an audience first before we remake it. Because what if people don't like the ending that the girl dies? They might want a happy ending. So they showed it to an audience, and the audience reacted kind of like you guys did. They, they laugh at places. They're entertained. And the studio said, let's take it to film festivals. So we made a film print. We took it to film festivals in one Sundance. So they released it theatrically. So whenever they said they were going to show it, I'd be like, no, no, this is my practice film. Give me $2,000. I'll go reshoot half of it. <laughs> no one was ever going to see it. But I learned a valuable lesson that you um, almost do better work when you throw something away, when you don't put that much, you don't make it so precious. So it's still. I did it as a learning experience, and I'm still learning from it. And uh, my partner in crime, the only other crew member, one take of everything, and the only other crew member was the star, uh, uh, Carlos. So here is uh, El Mariachi himself, Carlos Mariachi. great about the movie that everybody in the movie are not actors. Carlos was the only one who was even interested in acting. None of them had ever acted before. And I thought they did fantastic. Like the guy in black with a guitar case. He studied to be a doctor. He was not an actor. He looks so mean. Imagine that guy being your doctor. Uh, who was the, the other guy with the big mustache? He was a politician, a local politician. At TV personalities, local TV personalities. The great bartender. And the guy at the hotel. The guy in the hotel. Those were, Carlos was just very smart. He, he said, you know what, there's these two guys in the news, they, they hate everything that happens in town. They're going to they're gonna, they're gonna get mad that we're shooting in the streets like that. Like all those scenes of Carlos walking around in the streets, we didn't even close the streets. He, he was walking through the street with a gun. And then was, I'm filming, let's get the hell out of here. So Carlos was very shrewd. He said, let's cast them in the movie. And sure enough, they would be on the news every night talking about our movie, like, hey, these little guys are in town shooting this movie. You want to say anything about the actor? Tell them, mention it. Oh, one of the partners I wanted to mention was, to pay for this movie, Carlos sold a piece of land and I sold my body to science at Pharmaco here in Austin. <laughs> and I was in there a month. I saw the scars on my body to pay for the movie. And uh, one of the guys that I was in pharma Pharmaco with for a month, was this, uh, wasn't an actor either, it was this guy named Peter Marquardt, and I remember watching, we were watching movies while we were in there for a whole month, couldn't leave, and testing uh, a drug that lowered your cholesterol, and uh, I remember watching a movie with James Spader, and I looked at him and I thought, you kind of look like James Spader, and then I watched another movie, and there was Rutger Hauer, and I said, you kind of look like Rutger Hauer, hey, I'm going to cast you as the bad guy, so when people watch it, they think maybe it's one of those guys, they go, hey, I think I've seen that guy before. So I thought he did a terrific job. He didn't speak a word of Spanish. He had all his, that's why he wore sunglasses a lot, because he had his lines in his hand. And he 
he'd be, he'd be looking like that. You couldn't tell because the sunglasses were on. Peter Marquardt is here. Moko himself. I think one of the reasons why the actors were so good is because they didn't feel like they were making a movie. I mean, it was like that. I, w I was by myself with a camera. There's no, not even a sound guy. I mean, even a documentary crew has a sound guy. It was me. They didn't feel like they were making a movie at all. So they had no nervousness because they thought, well, this is a joke, obviously. So <laughs> everyone just performed and um, one take of everything, and then I would record the dial. It was very, it was a leisurely two-week shoot. So I'm surprised looking at it. That you could really melt the footage, and um, the film was so expensive, that camera was loud, it would, it would make a lot of noise, that's why you couldn't record sound, it would go, it sounded like all your money running away. I was, to, I was used to shooting video, which you could shoot forever on video, but film, ten minute, a 10 minute reel costs, you know, I don't know, 150 bucks, something, and it went up to 7,000, we only shot 24 reels, and then you had to process it, and then you had to transfer it, so, I would actually, this is how we would do action. Before he like ran through the street, I would say, action. And then once they were good and running, then I would start filming. <laughs> then I would stop filming to save money. <laughs> cut. Then I would call cut. So I was really just shooting little pieces of film so that it even strung together is a miracle. What did you want to say? I just want to say, uh, Robert has been a brother to me. And uh, he's been a genius since he was 12 years old. Then. And I'm very proud to uh, have had a great relationship for 30 years as a friend. And he's a very, very special friend to me. There's this, uh, there's this great movie like, movie of the week like dramatic moment in the making of Mariachi that Carlos was a part of. He was the one who always believed in us, and he would say, when we went to sell the movie and we weren't going to sell it, I mean, we're going to get 17000 for it, maybe. They were going to give us the, the Mexican video um, division that we took it to was maybe going to give us $10,000. I said, you know what? We thought we would make more than that. And even though it only cost 7000 we'll make our money back. It cost me a lot of time. And uh, I, I can't do it again. I know our plan was to make several, but we're not gonna, if we don't sell this, we're not going to do another one. He said, so I'd say we're just going to quit. I was like, yeah, we're going to quit because I can't do it again. And I remember this tense moment, like I thought, wow, what if we did sell it? This would be such a great moment to look back on. And we didn't sell it, but it went to Columbia Pictures and it turned into a much bigger deal. But we almost gave up then, at Columbia Pictures not taking it as an audition and then accidentally screen it to an audience and hear the audience reaction, it never would have happened. So it was really just by doing something like tonight, people watching it and enjoying it, that the movie even got a chance. Because I didn't even want it to be seen. I thought I could do a better job than that with a lot more money and a crew. This was really just a practice film. And there's something really special about, like I was saying, throwing it away and really just doing it from the heart and doing it just for fun and not having this preconceived idea. I don't think everybody, anybody ever makes a movie with that intention that no one would see it. I mean, I literally hope nobody would see it. That's why it was called El Mariachi, because who would rent an action movie in the Spanish video department called The Guitar Player? I mean, you wouldn't. I, I was a cartoonist, so I thought it'd be a funny joke that somebody goes and goes, you know what, I'm gonna give this movie a chance and then pop it in and be totally surprised there's action in it. I thought, that was why I did it. It was really just for practice. And I think that's why it kind of resonates with people and really, more than that, inspires people to go and say, well, hell, I can do that. So uh, yeah. I think a lot of other people went and did it because of that. What, what, what was your memory of shooting the movie, if you had any, because it was so quick? Well, I don't have a lot to say, but I, I, I just know that kicking the shit out of somebody in 30 games of Battleship, and 20 years later, here we are. Now, <laughs> 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 we played a lot of Battleship in that hospital, or whatever I'm supposed to do. 